You are welcome to a new video lesson with Bright Edo. In today's video lesson, I'll be discussing on how to calculate empirical and molecular formula of an organic compound. Now you can see the practice question written on the board and in the course of today's lesson i'll be explaining on how this concept work step by step now if you are new to this community you do well to click the subscribe button so you don't miss out any video lesson to be posted very soon and you do well to check all my chemistry tutorial step by step lessons to improve greatly in chemistry and also share these lessons with your friends. So let's get into this practice question. I've already created two video lessons that will help you understand properly the concept of empirical formula because empirical formula is the simplest formula of a compound. Understanding empirical formula will help you to solve questions on molecular formula. But in the course of this lesson, I'll be explaining them from the beginning till the end. So you stay tuned from the beginning of this lesson till the end so you can understand step by step on how this concept works. So first of all, let's read out the question. The question says, an organic compound containing 40% carbon and 6.6% .6 hydrogen and the rest oxygen. This particular word, we have to be careful with it, which I will explain properly. Full stop. If the molecular mass of the compound is 180, this G means grams, and this slash means per, and this is mole. So it's pronounced grams per mole. 180 grams per mole, full stop. Calculate the empirical formula of the compound and also calculate the molecular formula of the compound giving the atomic masses of the element involved in the compound. This question is so very easy. Let's solve together. I'm going to divide the board into two, whereby the first part here, I will solve empirical, while this other part, I will solve molecular formula. But let me, in, let me increase the line, because here we'll basically, so you can enter the calculations for empirical formula here. A molecular formula is not a problem. Now, let's get into this practice question. First of all, what are the elements given? We have three elements given in this compound. They are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. You know, in my previous lesson, I've talked about this many times. First of all, you write out the element given in the question, which is carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now, what was the percentage of carbon? 40%. So, percent of elements. Here we entail, okay, let's just write the sign. Percent of elements, okay? And what are the percentage? For carbon is 40%. For hydrogen is 6.6%. .6%. Now, if you check my previous video lesson I explained on the empirical formula, which I'll put the link up here, you go watch it. I, I actually said that the percentages given in this question must amount to 100. It must always give you 100. So percentage is over 100. And then I said that the rest is oxygen. So we already know that percentage is over 100. So how do we not get the percent of oxygen? Very easy. Let's work that. Very, very, no stress. So remember, we already know that total percentage in a particular compound is equal to 100. Okay. And, and what gives us this 100 is the percentage of the elements. And what are the elements involved in this compound? They are three carbon hydrogen and oxygen it's supposed to give us how many percent 100 percent going back for carbon in the question they give us as 40 percent plus hydrogen what was the percentage 6.6 percent .6%. so we are looking we are looking for the percentage of oxygen so this is unknown equal to 100 percent so let's add this 40 plus 6.6 percent .6%. so what are we having we are having 46 0.6 percent plus oxygen which is unknown which we are looking for is equal to 100 percent so what becomes the next step we are to collect lightens c l t collect like them that means this value that's here we will basically cross the equality sign to this side you know it's positive when it crosses becomes negative okay this particular value will cross and have the negative sign so let's walk through that so oxygen remains here will not be equal to 100 percent minus it has crossed as for 6.6 percent so let's do that 
So percentage of oxygen will now become 100% minus 46.6%. What's that? 53.4%. 53.4% is the percentage of oxygen that they said and the rest oxygen. So here becomes 53.4%. Remember the next step is to divide by their atomic masses. So we will divide by atomic masses. Okay, that's the next step. Very easy. So let's divide by the atomic masses. What are the atomic masses given the question for carbon? It is 12 for uh, hydrogen 1, while oxygen is 16. So let's walk through them. Let's divide it. 40 over 12, that is 3.3. Okay, all these the mole values. Here becomes 6.6%. And here becomes, let's walk through that, 53.4 divided by 16. That's 3.3. 3.34, okay? Now, I think they are almost close. So, what are we to do next? We divide by the smallest. That's step. We divide by the smallest. By the smallest. So, let's do that. When we divide by smallest, what's the smallest value? Okay, I think it's 3.33, which is almost same as 3.34. So, when we do this, I think we are having one. Because 3.33 divided this, we are having one, actually. And this, I think we are going to get two. So, 6.6. .6 Divide by 3.33, that's 1.98, approximately 2, okay? Okay, we had 1.98, which is approximately 2, okay? So, and here, we are having the same value, which is 1, okay? Because 3.34 divided by uh, 3.33, that's 1, that's 1, okay? So, with that, we have gotten our mole ratio. All these are the mole ratio value. For carbon, it is 1. For hydrogen, it is 2. While for oxygen, it is 1 also. What becomes the empirical formula of the compound? The empirical formula becomes C. 1 H2O1. Or we can as well say C H2O. Because, you know, 1 1 is negligible. Okay, just a number 1 is just like saying nothing. Do you get? So that's how it works. So we've actually solved for one of the questions, which is determining empirical formula, EF. Empirical formula of the compound is now CH2O. So you can see how it works. So with all this said, let's quickly talk about determination of the molecular formula. And how do we do that? So very easy, which I'll be explaining now. So let's get into determining the molecular formula of the compound. Now what will happen here is this. Empirical formula, as I, as I teach through this class, the empirical formula of using EF to represent it because of, you know, the ball, so it can actually uh, accommodate everywhere. Well, for the molecular formula, I will use MF, molecular formula. Hope you understand what I'm saying. Now, with all this said, let's get into determining the molecular formula. Now, for we to do that, we have to remember something. There's a formula that we must take note of. So I'll write one formula, I will change the formula, not changing it actually, I will just change a particular uh, word in the formula I am to write first because I'm to explain something very, 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 very soon. So let's go. Empirical formula, which is EF, there's a formula you all should take note, which I'm writing, for getting molecular formula. Empirical formula, which is EF, you write it in the bracket and you now write N. N means number of moles. Are you getting me now? is equal to molecular formula. This is something we must take note of. What did I say? Empirical formula, you put in a bracket, you now write N down, is equal to what? Molecular formula. So, I'm to change it. Remember this formula because we are working through this formula. But we now, for we to now solve, we will not change our formula formula to mass mass. So here becomes empirical mass N is equal to, let me just write it in full, molecular mass molecular mass we are coming now what do we do next what was the empirical formula we got initially look at it now ch2o that was the empirical formula so how do we get our empirical mass we get it by getting like just calculating it look at it how do you get empirical mass you get your atomic mass what's the atomic mass of carbon 12 plus What's the atomic mass of hydrogen? One, go through what I am doing. It's very, very easy. It's not difficult. First, we have to get our empirical mass. This is the empirical mass I'm calculating for. So how do we do that now? Just watch. 12, which is the atomic mass of carbon, plus, you do that, plus 
Hydrate, what's the atomic mass? One. How many hydrogen are we having in this compound? Two times two plus. Oxygen, what's it? 16. Okay. And how many oxygen are we having? No oxygen, just 16. If it was like O2, say 16 times 2. So with all this said, let's get our empirical mass. 12 plus 2 plus 16. That's 30. So it's equal to 30 grams per mole. 30 grams per mole is the empirical mass. So here for EM, which is empirical mass, I'll put this 30. So what do we do? Empirical mass now because of 30 grams per mole. Okay, into bracket N, your N remains, is equal to what's our molecular mass given the question? 180 grams per mole. Now, the next step to follow is to divide both sides by the coefficient of N. What's the coefficient of N? The value that is close to N it is 30. So we we'll divide both sides by the coefficient of N, which is 30 over 30. So it cancels. So 180 over 30. 180 over 30, that's 6. So, n will be equal to 6. Now, with all this said, listen carefully. If you observe, you can see how we go empirical formula without stress. Now, I recap molecular formula. Molecular formula, for you to get it, you simply write your first formula, which is empirical formula n is equal to what molecular formula. Well, you now change that formula to like putting mass in place of formula, putting mass in place of formula because you have to solve the particular value which you just did now. What's the empirical mass? You come to your empirical formula and get it. Okay, you whatever you had here, just calculate all the atomic classes of the element together and get a value. You have to be careful here, you don't just solve. You have to look at what is here. If it was three, you put times three, you don't just solve. You have to be careful. You follow through the steps I followed here, and after that, you've got your empirical mass, you put it inside here, you now still write your n is equal to your molecular mass. Your molecular mass is always given in the practice question, you write it down, and next step, divide both sides by the coefficient of n, that's the value that is close to n, which is 30, which I've done now, and I've gotten the n value to be 6. So how do we now get our molecular formula? Because we've got an empirical formula here already. Now watch now, let me write the formula. Empirical formula, which is N, is equal to molecular formula. What's the empirical formula we just got here? Is CH2O. That's our empirical formula. And what was our N value? 6. You have to be careful. We have to get molecular formula. So we represented our empirical formula is this, and the N value we just got is 6. So you can see that this 6 that we're having here can times through everything inside this bracket. Yes, it can. So let's do that. One more time for having C6. Okay, 6 times this carbon. That's C6. H what? 6 times 2. That's 12. 12. C6 H12. O6. 6 is times in O also. O6. So this is the molecular formula of the compound. Well, this is the empirical formula of this compound. My point here, you have to look at the formula carefully. After looking at the formula, you change it formula, formula to mass, mass, and you know, calculate your empirical mass, bring it back. Your molecular mass always given, bring, uh, uh, put it there, and divide both sides by the coefficient of n. And after doing that, getting your n value, you basically go back to your introductory formula, impute it, and you know, times, and get an answer. I believe you understand what I'm saying. It is very easy. It is not difficult.